Hello and welcome to this tutorial on WOW Frequency Equalizer Pro, that is, the extended version of WOW Frequency Equalizer, a plugin whose operation is based on frequency separation. We've discussed the principle of frequency separation and the basic operations of the original plugin in different tutorials, so we won't get into those details again. We've paired the two editions side by side so you may see the differences. Both can be launched, of course, from the usual window menu under the voice extensions. On the left you can see the classic version of WOW Frequency Equalizer, on the right the Pro version. You may notice that the only difference in the interface is represented by an additional row of controls, namely a checkbox called Luma, a couple of buttons named Classic and Social, and a button called Decompose. I will now close the Classic version of WOW, because all we need to access is available also in the Pro version, as we just showed. I would like to start from the center, to show the difference between the Classic and Social modes. In one of the previous tutorials we've shown that the behavior of WOW is quite different depending on the size in pixel of the image we are working on. This can actually become a problem when the images are very small. You may object that usually you don't deal with files whose linear size is just a few hundred pixels, but sometimes you might. And I'm referring of course to the images headed to social networks like Facebook or other well-known platforms. If you try to apply a WOW preset to an image whose main scope is to become an avatar on Facebook, you might encounter problems. Let's see why. The two images you are seeing look identical, but they are not. The one on the left is a lot larger, with a height of 3000 pixels. The one on the right was scaled down by 25%, yielding a height of 750 pixels. The reason why they look the same size is that the zoom factor in Photoshop is different for each one of them. Yet WOW doesn't know about zoom factors, it can only work on real pixels. Let's see what happens when we apply a certain preset, like WOW, to the large image and the same preset to the small image. The first thing I want to do is check that the large image is active then make sure that Classic is selected, and then apply WOW. Classic is the emulation of the original WOW plugin. Now I will make the smaller image active and apply exactly the same preset. You can certainly notice how different the two results are. The large image shows what we expect from this preset whereas the small one looks like it's been badly sharpened. There's no added smoothness, and I would have a hard time defending that this is a WOW effect. That's why the social alternative has been added. If you enable this button, a different algorithm is used in the computation. The algorithm is optimized for small images, and in turn, it won't usually work on larger ones. It would be unrealistic to expect that an equally named preset yields the same results, because these still depend heavily on the size of the image, but as you may see, with respect to what we had before, the resulting image is a lot more acceptable as a starting point than we would obtain with a classic setup. So the recommendation is that you enable social rather than classic when you're going to work on a set of images already resized for the web. At this point, we can close the smaller image because the new features we are going to discuss are not size related, so we'd better work on a regular image. Let me reset everything, so this goes, and I will go back to the original version. We may also duplicate the background as we usually do, and here we go. A close inspection of this photograph shows that the skin needs some retouching. There are dozens of techniques more or less sophisticated to do that, 
and one of these relies on the decomposition of the image in two frequency layers. As we know, WOW works on five different frequencies, which are controlled by the sliders. We go back to classic mode, of course, and we apply a preset. It could be Skin, or WOW. I think WOW is a better starting point in this case, if we're going to retouch the final result by hand. Let me draw your attention on the Luma checkbox first. If you make it active, there is a difference in how the color of the image is treated. WOW can sometimes cause small color shifts, especially in saturation, which may be visible or not. In this case, the difference is very, very small. If you notice color shifts, they may be pleasant or not. If they aren't, you can click on this button and instruct the plugin not to recompute the color. In practice, when Luma is active, the original color remains untouched. More technically, we are using the luminosity of the WOW layer and the color of what's underneath. As I said, this may be an issue or not, but it's worth having the chance to change the default behavior of the plugin. By the way, the default is to work without Luma. I personally like to keep it on instead. Finally, the Decompose button, a really unique feature. Wow works on five different frequency layers, but where are they? Well, they're hidden. You can actually manipulate them with the sliders, but there's nothing else you can do, unless you use the Decompose button. Let's see what happens. This operation may take a while, depending on the speed of your machine and the size of the image, but in practice you get a decomposition in six different layers, and they are what scientists call a pyramid of layers. Each one of these addresses a different frequency. Bottom to top, a base layer image, extremely blurred, followed by increasing frequency layers. The higher the frequency, the finer the detail. The layer named Scale 2 seems to be responsible for most of the skin blemishes. Let's zoom in a bit and see. If that's true, we can see them here. So, using the Clone Stamp tool on it sounds like a brilliant idea. This doesn't change the remaining frequencies, I remind you, so that every layer addresses a single and peculiar characteristic of the image. I'll show you very quickly what you can do, making sure that the Clone Stamp tool is set to sample on the current layer only. Normal mode, 100% opacity. You can of course make the Scale 2 layer active and use the Clone Stamp tool like this. You can clearly see that the texture of the skin replaces the most evident blemishes. Just to make a quick comparison, we went from here to here. But one interesting technique is that you can obtain exceptionally smooth results, even on large areas, by blurring the right frequency layer. If you look, there is a darker area here that we would like to make smoother. By inspecting the layers, we realize it's very visible on the one called Scale 4. Let's check the others. Not very much on scale 3, a bit on scale 5, but I guess this is more pronounced. So, what we can do is blur scale 4 locally. Let me show you how I can do it. Remember to make this layer active. Get your lasso tool. Select roughly this area. Remember to set a feather factor of about 40 pixels or whatever is fit for the image, or otherwise feather the selection if you need. And at this point, you can blur this layer with a filter like Gaussian Blur or any other blurring algorithm you may want to try. Let me show you. It's Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and the radius 
is usually quite a few pixels, something like 50 or 40 might do in this case. This is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. If I zoom in at 200%, you can see how the situation changes, but the texture doesn't change at all. So, this is potentially a very good idea on how to work. You can also select scale 5, we've noticed that there was something on it as well, and then maybe reapply the same Gaussian blur, simply going like this, and you have an even smoother result. Let's zoom back to 100%, Command D to deselect, and see the difference. This is what we had, this is what we have now. So, before and after. Of course, what I'm showing you is now very rough and very quick, because this is just a tutorial, but I think you understood the many possibilities that you have with WOW Frequency Equalizer Pro. Of course, you can repeat exactly the same process on other areas if needed. There's also something else that I would like to show you, and this is rather advanced. I don't even need WOW Frequency Equalizer to show you this, but the Actions panel. You see, here you have the Know-how Transfer Advanced Decomposed. This is a set of two actions which need to be loaded exactly as any other action. They come into flavors. This one is WOW Pro Decompose Add Curves and this one is WOW Pro Decompose Add Curves and Objects. After making a decomposition, you run these actions to add clipped curves to each scale layer. Let me show you how. You simply select one and then run. And you get this huge palette of layers where every single frequency layer has a clipped curve that can be tweaked. Let me show you how. Like, uh, let's take this one. You see, the curves is born with a center point, and then you simply have to change the contrast in the layer depending on what you want to obtain by keeping the midpoint fixed. You may wonder, what's this? Well, let me tell you, it's exactly as working with the sliders, so it doesn't really add anything new except for one important thing. When you use WOW Frequency Equalizer, either Classical or Pro, once you set the sliders and then you accept the result, you can't go back, really. You would need to do the image again. Then maybe you want to go into retouching, and I've shown you how. But then, at that point, you may be interested in changing the sliders again only it is impossible to do it straight away, but you can do it by tweaking the curves and by changing actually the contrast of each single layer. It's less intuitive, but it's extremely powerful also because I don't know what's going to happen, but you may obtain the weirdest effect by exploiting the fact that any curve can have up to 16 points, extremes included. So, let's reset this one, of course. If you use default curves, it's exactly like not having anything applied to each layer. Otherwise, you may tweak, as I told you, exactly what you want to tweak. One important thing, never, and I do mean never, move the center point. If you move the center point, your image may explode and the luminosity and color will change horribly most of the times. So, it's very very important that you set it here. Just one small tip. If by chance you move the point, remember that the exact position is 128 and 128 that you need to dial into the two fields that appear when you select that point. So, this is really the end of this tutorial about WOW Frequency Equalizer Pro. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it will improve your editing workflow in images that you are going to treat with WOW Frequency Equalizer. All the best, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye!